Dutch East Indies, eh? the Dutch East India, and in China also a, a small area that they had. Um, so that was the colonial rule on the territories of Java, Batavia, uh, Sumatra, and Borneo. It was not formally known as the Dutch East Indies. Now, the main drives that, that led the Dutch to, to, win, to uh, actually venture to the East was the spices, né? the spice trade, and, and also the, the slavery. Um, and the slave trade, which then actually took place at the Cape also, the trading of slaves. And uh, the slave lodge in Cape Town is also a, a very important uh, historical beacon today, which actually symbolizes the, the slavery at the Cape. Those slaves were also in the countryside, eh? it was more in the, in the rural areas also. So both Indonesia and the Republic of South Africa as a colonialist past. Eh? Uh, both uh, uh, Indonesia uh, was colonized and South Africa also. So we are in the same mutual um, historical link. Eh? So with the, 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 the Second World War uh, caused almost like a turning point in the past with the Japanese uh, conquered the Dutch East Indies, and then, um, and then their colonial um, power collapsed. Eh? So then in August 1945, Indonesia became an independent um, country from, from the Netherlands, they broke free eh? um, in 1945. Then we also see an older historical cartographic map of, uh, which comes from the Huerta Atlas, the comprehensive atlas of the Dutch United East India Company. It's also um, at the, at the library, the Western Cape Archives Library, of that um, book on the center there, is the, the Huerta Atlas. So that actually shows you the geographical map eh, of the Sumatra and Borneo and Java. So the legacy of slavery was one of the most pivotal uh, aspects that, that stood out in the history between the uh, Dutch East Indies and, and the Cape. Uh, due to the slave trade, eh? there was a, uh, a quite big slave trade that took place uh, from the East India Islands. Shingalese and Javanese convicts eh? were also brought to the Cape. Uh, most of them were Batavian Chinese, which were also uh, worked as convicts, eh? convict laborers at the Cape. Um, Robert, uh, the historian Robert C. H. Shaw um, wrote a book, The Children of Bondage, which was a very um, an important historical work that, that uh, touched on the slavery and also mentioned the, the uh, slaves from the Indonesian area. Yeah. Um, so within the slave registers, I will point to you in a moment, uh, more detailed uh, aspects on the slave registers, but in the uh, general South African past, uh, slave names were given, uh, such as, for example, Magdalena van Batavia or Sylvia van Borneo. Those were Dutch names uh, that the, the slave, uh, when, the, when the slaves were sold at the Cape, they were given names. Uh, according to the areas they came from. Eh? So the soldier of Van Borne was found in 1776. But there were um, uh, various, numerous other uh, people also with, with names relating to, to that area. There you will see the, the roots of the uh, main slave roots from the east to the Cape. 
Sea, from the East India Islands. They were also from Madagascar and eh? also big, and from India and Ceylon. So, so it was uh, uh, huge, a huge a, a long number of slaves that came from that area. So then in 1795, the Dutch East India Company of Philosia uh, collapsed. Eh? They, they uh, became um, financially bankrupt and they couldn't um, govern any, any further as a company, as a, as a, as a governing system. Eh? So they came to a, um, a fall and uh, the British uh, first occupation took place of the Cape. Uh, in 17, after 1795, the, the British conquered the Cape. And then, with the time of the, the, the Napoleonic Wars, it was the time of Napoleon, eh, of Bonaparte, uh, the Treaty of Amiens uh, decided, or they stipulated, that the British um, want to return the Cape back to the Netherlands, to their rule. And then the, the, the Netherlands um, decided, okay, the um, Cape must resort under the Batavian rule. Uh, so then the Cape were governed by the Batavian authorities, né, from the east now, uh, for, for three years. The Cape were actually under their uh, authority. Now in March 1803, Commissioner General J.A. De Mist was seen together with General J.W. Janssen to organize the government at the Cape. So they were responsible, they were still sent from the Netherlands, but they were still under the rule of the Batavian Republic. And so uh, they said within that time, the Batavian Republic era, there were much, and there were many positive changes to, to, the, uh, to the governance at the Cape. So, uh, because the MIST wanted to centralize the government, and they also had the Reken Kamer, the Reken Minister uh, uh, Accounting uh, Finances, Finance Chamber that he opened at the Cape. Um, but as I said, they were still under the rule of Batavia, especially the Council of India in Batavia. You see uh, the council in meeting, they were sitting there, eh? the Council of Batavia. So the political council were responsible to the Batavian uh, government there. Yeah. And um, while at the Cape, the, the mist was traveling through the countryside and he visited uh, the Cape. Uh, and gradually, he wanted to liberate the slaves. He, his philosophy was to try to liberate the slaves at that time by freeing the, uh, the children of the slaves when they were born. Uh, and he wanted to prohibit any further importation of slaves. And they actually got that right, but, but slavery was still in, in uh, existence yeah, at that uh, time. And he wanted actually to uh, import laborers from the Netherlands to come and work here instead of slaves. But the slavery would only end, the formal slavery in, in 1838, with the emancipation of the slave system right, in England. So, in 1806, the second British occupation of the Cape took place. So, then the formal um, British rule started, okay, uh, which then ended the Batavian rule. So, uh, the Batavian Republic was a very short time span. Was near um, between uh, five years, eh? that time time period. So the second part I want to.